All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, glad you invited me out to do this quick little, I call it Florida Cycling 101. Uh, my name is Becky Afonso. I'm the executive director of the Florida Bicycle Association. I've been in this job, I'm going into my seventh year. The association actually originated in 1987, and it had a good run up until about 1996. Then it kind of disbanded, but it was reformed in 1997. So actually next year will be our 25th anniversary. So education is actually what we were founded on. Advocacy, we've learned as part of that. Um, you got to educate first to be able to make your point in advocacy. But to, to the point of being here today, we were uh, looking at just discussing some basics, which, which again is I'm calling Florida Cycling 101. And I put together a small point for that because I like doing that when we're in these Zoom meetings. Uh, so it was brought to my attention that uh, first part of anything in bike riding is getting the right bike uh, for what you need. Sizing matters. Uh, if you're not Fit it to your bike correctly, or if it's not the bike you need to ride for whatever your riding uh, conditions are, you're probably not going to enjoy it. You're probably going to hurt yourself. There could be some pain, uh, especially with muscles if you're pulling or constricting, and you probably won't do it for very long. So it is important, and if you're not familiar with this, there's information on the, on the internet with regards to how to size a bike, or you can go to a local bike shop and have them try to fit you to size a bike. But it is important to get on the right size bike. You're going to have better control. And again, you're going to enjoy it a lot better if it fits you correctly. And then one thing that we go over with as far as getting that bike, and sometimes it's a matter of, uh, especially this time of year, uh, pulling bikes out of the garage if they've been sitting because it was too cold to ride. And I know that's, that's funny. I'm a native Floridian, but it can get too cold for some native Floridians. Uh, to perform an ABC quick check before every ride, not just after a, a spell where you haven't ridden the bike, but every time. Check the air in your tires. Check your brakes. Make sure that A, they're connected, and B, that they actually stop the wheels. Uh, check your chain. Again, if you leave that bike in for too long, sometimes, especially in Florida, humidity in the garage could cause rust. If you finished a bike ride after it rained and you didn't dry things off, could cause rust. So you want to make sure that chain is lubed and functioning. Quick release, those, those are the newer sets of how you can remove a wheel. Uh, for people that take their bikes places to go ride, maybe you've had to take the wheel off and you put the wheel back on. Maybe you forgot to tighten that quick release. Uh, you'll want to do that. And then just take the bike after you go through all of this and just ride it around a little bit and make sure everything is functioning properly. Get the shifters, do the brakes. Make sure everything's okay. You know, sometimes I forget I loan my bike out to a family member and I've got to readjust the seat. And I don't think of it doing an ABC quick check, but I think of it when I take the bike out for a little bit to, to feel how it, how it works. And it's like, oh, this is wrong. That's right. I need to move the seat again. So those are things to consider before the ride. Now, the questions everybody's having about, okay, you know, got a bike, I want to ride it. What are the laws? Well, these are just some basic laws awesome. uh, statutes in the state of Florida. Uh, the first one is a driver. So a driver is anyone in physical control of a vehicle. That's the premise of what a driver is. And then this pertains to a bicycle, an electric bicycle. So the electric bicycle is new as of uh, last session. So the bicycle is a vehicle. So again, it makes a cyclist a driver. Uh, it's a vehicle allowed on the road. Uh, electric bikes have the same rules as a bicycle, so therefore they are also allowed. Now, there are some nuances to all of this. Again, this is very basic, but for an electric bicycle, uh, local jurisdictions can determine where the electric bicycles can be ridden. So it can go above and beyond a, a bicycle being allowed everywhere. Um, case in point here in the Tampa Bay area, the city of St. Petersburg, they don't allow bicycles or electric bicycles on certain sidewalks in the downtown district because it's a high popu populated with pedestrian area. So they don't want that mixture of modes. So they do have that within their uh, toolbox to say, bike's not here, but they are very good about where bikes are allowed. And so that goes back to the uh, cyclist having all the rights as a driver on the road. So basically, same rules, same rights. 
motorists, mm -hmm. cyclists. and uh, what I'd like to tell cyclists is if you wouldn't do that maneuver in your motor vehicle, don't do it on a bicycle. It is very easy for momentum to carry you through stop signs, but that's not legally right. And it would annoy you if you saw a motorist do it. Well, the motorist is annoyed when they see a cyclist do it. So everybody's trying to be law abiding and that's generally where, uh, you know, just the perceptions come in or the interpretations come in. But, but as a driver of a motor vehicle or a bicycle, you must, must follow the laws. Now for best practices, and this goes back to some of those nuances of the laws, for instance, uh, one of the laws regulations for a bicycle is to ride as far to the right as practicable. There are, I think, seven exceptions to that line, but all the here's is ride to the right. Well, there are some best practices to consider when riding too far to the right. And this is one of the graphics that I like to use. If you're riding too far to the right, such as where that white line is on the right-hand side, the motorist is looking at you, that, that lane, thinking, I can get in here and pass. And unfortunately, it's a squeeze play where they may hit you. Whereas if the cyclist who has a legal right to the, to the lane rides a little bit towards the center of the lane, you're in better view of the motorist. And the motorist is now looking at that differently as far as I can't just squeeze them lane, I'm gonna to have to change lanes. See, so I, find it, I find a problem with that is that there's like certain areas of bike lane, especially around here, which are very, very sketchy, which you don't wanna be in because they're like full of literally like mismatched concrete and stuff like that. So you're naturally, you're not gonna to wanna to ride your road bike in there because it's literally like doing an off-road section. So you move <laughs> out and especially last weekend, there was no one on this sec particular section of tree line yet an Audi Q5 made it out of his business to honk his horn really loudly and pass it so close when there was no one in the other lane. The other lane was totally vacant. So it still feels like a major threat. Yeah. I, and I, probably all of us have experienced this. I have. Um, and that is one of those exceptions in that law as far as far, uh, riding as far to the right as practical, even with the mandatory bike lane use law, those same exceptions are in that are in that law. So uh, if it is gravel, debris, you have every mm -hmm. right to move out of that lane. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's for your own safety. Now, yeah, you're gonna get a motorist that may not understand that. We deal with this. It's unfortunate. Is it a lack of education? Is it the lack of common courtesy? Probably. Uh, I try not to let it bum me out for the ride but mm -hmm. when you get that close to your life as in life and death it really makes you question you know what's going on here why 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 does why don't more floridians motorists whoever understand that your behavior on the road if you're doing it legally is for your own good everybody just wants to get a to b safely and alive uh, exactly. so I don't understand the power play. Sometimes what I think to myself, especially if it's a close call, because A, I'm alive and still riding the bike. Mm -hmm. But then I think to myself, well, that's got to feel good for that driver because I'm a 57-year-old woman on a Schwinn. <laughs> <laughs> so, Love that. That, that gets me going. So, <laughs> so I, I understand it's, it's not uncommon for cyclists to talk about that. Uh, you know, we do programming for motorists as well. I've been in front of rotary clubs and we've talked about this. And I've actually done neighborhood rides where I'm taking general motorists who are just learning a little bit about bicycling. And when we go over this particular maneuver, especially on a neighborhood road where the, le the comfort level is a little bit better, there's not a lot of traffic. And when I get them out into the lane, they get it. Because the car generally behind us now gives us more than the three people three feet feet passing law because they got to change lanes and when you get five feet or better you start to understand why that that is a good strategy uh one of the let's see the next one okay so so usually for rotary clubs or anywhere else i'm saying everybody practice cpr and that's not when the cyclist goes down this is all the time uh courtesy patience and respect but it's got to be everybody 
It's got to be this feeling of we're all in this together. Uh, we've got to feel like this is, these are public roads and this is for public safety. And so sometimes the bad behavior that I see in cyclists is they don't communicate. Uh, and this unfortunately is a group that tends to have earbuds in. Uh, mm -hmm. They're probably in their own little world. And, you know, I can be in my own little world too, but I take a certain level of responsibility and accountability when I'm on the road, either in my motor vehicle or in my bicycle. I don't, I don't wear headsets at all uh, in either one of those vehicles. But I find that eye contact is very helpful. Uh, using your hand signals, I mean, I, it, it's a pet peeve for Floridians when they don't use turn signals in their motor vehicles. Well, how is anybody going to know where a cyclist is going? Now, if you're not comfortable taking your hand off the handlebar to signal where you're going, practice it. Uh, get comfortable doing that because it's very helpful for anybody on the road to be able to anticipate your moves when you communicate. And for club riding, this is talked up big as far as in pace lines and, and whatnot. But one of the examples that I like to share, and this is here in my own town in Oldsmar, is I've got to cross a four lane road to get to the post office. And it's triggered by a, a traffic light, but my bike and me don't trigger it. So if I'm the first one at the stop bar and I notice a car's coming up behind me, I actually turn around and try to get them to kind of move a little bit closer. A lot of them are very hesitant. Um, right when the pandemic hit, I, I had a guy just say, no way, I got to keep six feet. And I'm like, wow, that's even better than the three foot passing law if you want to keep six feet uh, the whole way around. But a motorist that understands it and inches up a little bit and triggers a light, they get it. And, and then I can kind of move out of their way so that they can get ahead of me as we're both going through the intersection. So there's little maneuvers, there's little ways to communicate that if you're doing it for the betterment of everybody, it, it starts to resonate and it makes sense, you know? Uh, so those, those are things, you know, eye contact is huge. If you can do it with a, with a motorist, uh, chances are a lot of it, uh, we've got a major trail system here. A lot of it is you stop on the trail for the traffic and then they stop and they wave you on. It can upset people because A, they've clipped out and now they're stopped, but you know what? People are just being nice. So you kind of have to smile, wave, whatever, but always, always with a smile. Uh, can't go wrong if you're smiling at people. And then of course, this last part about best practices is paying attention. And I have seen cyclists on the phone. I've seen motorists on the phone. Uh, we need to get rid of the phones. Really, uh, just don't even don't even attempt it. It's ridiculous to think you can multitask when you're on a public road with everything else that's going on. So, so hey, Becky, on that one, what is the current Florida law in terms of even for drivers of vehicles on for mobile phones? It's it's actually just texting as a primary offense. So that that came about about two years ago. So that is so just to be clear. So texting is, is a primary offense in not, it's not just school zones and work zones. It's everywhere. Right. It, yeah. It's a primary offense everywhere. And, and I have to go back and look at the law, but it may, the penalties fines may increase in a school zone. Uh, what about uh, just, the whole talking just, on the phone thing as well? Because there's so many people that are literally like this phone to ear when it's clear that their car has got a hands-free system because it's like a new model of car. Well, again, it's not a law that says you have to be in. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, even I believe within cycling, you are allowed a one earpiece in attached to a cell phone. So I would never dream of doing that. Oh, my God. And, you know, this it's is one of those crazy. things about best practices. There's laws and then there's best practices. And I, and I say this even in front of a, a room of our ride leader ride marshals. None of us have to wear a helmet if we're 16 or older, but mm -hmm. we do it. And we do it because it's a best practice for saving your one and only brain. So <laughs> even though there may not be a hands-free law, I'm with you, I'm not touching it. Um, you, but that again, it, why we wait for laws we don't have to, we can actually just do better um, paying attention wise and, and hopefully not wait for a law. I don't think everything is solved by a law uh, and people like to break laws. I, I would hope we could all just common knowledge, just take care of each other. 
I get optimistic and all Pollyanna sometimes. <laughs> One other point I wanted to bring up to this group um, was the consideration of, you know, recreational writing is great. Welcome to Florida. This is what we're known for this time of year. But I actually like to instill the idea of commuting or doing errands by bike, especially if it's three miles or less. Now, I, I've actually shown this to our city council here in Oldsmar, where we're situated in downtown. I can get to a grocery store. I can get to the post office. I can walk to the library. We're in a great area where we're kind of in this nucleus of where we can get to places. And when I drew it on the map with a radius of three feet, it was all within the three feet. So do I feel like I need to ride my car? Well, maybe if it's pouring rain or something like that. But even today, and I actually took some pictures so I could show this. Um, again, post office is about a mile from my house and I can fit seven large envelopes, four small, two thank you cards. Even in 21 mile per hour winds, I ride my bike. Um, you know, there's ways to do it. I, I will tell you at first, the uh, post office didn't believe I could get this on my bike until I showed them that I have saddlebags. Uh, but that was, I think, one of the times when I brought one of the big boxes uh, to get mailed because I can strap it to the rack on the back of the bike. So there's ways to consider this. And generally, when I'm doing this particular ride, I'll go from the post office and I'll do a little section of our Oldsmar Trail and it will dump me closer to the grocery store. And I could actually pick up a few groceries using that bag and bring them home. <laughs> So there are things like that. I will say that um, the exchange from car miles to bike miles for me commuting this way is probably about 2000 a year. So that's where I'm replacing car trips with my bicycle trip and uh, feeling a lot healthier about it and bragging rights to being able to go into a 21 mile headwind and still maintain a 10 mile per hour average. <laughs> Uh, what I sent Sandra were these two publications. This is something that our association provides for free. So I'm not sure where she would have put those, but we can verify that. Uh, the law enforcement guide, even though it says 2019, it's current to statute. Uh, and this is more about guiding principles as far as the laws. It doesn't get at every nuance such as the electric bike definition, because quite honestly, we never put just strict definitions into that guide. And then the Florida Bicycling Street Smarts, this actually is more towards a commuter perspective of strategies and lane riding and, and things of that nature. So these are good things to read, uh, knowledge is power. We find that the, the more education you get and the experiences, the more comfortable you'll be out there. And building up your confidence is where you can ride your bike a little bit longer. So that's, uh, that's my presentation. And at this point, if there's any specific questions and we want to play stump the ED, uh, I'm willing to try it. 